in this repo at Octodev Auth0 Angular example. And in this repo, there's a demo.adoc, adoc for ASCII doctor, that I will use as instructions for everything that we'll do today. So if you're developing a modern Angular app, you might need a way to authenticate your users. And that's where OpenID Connect comes into play. The short name, name for it is OIDC, and it's a thin layer on top of OAuth 2.0 that adds identity. So in this tutorial, I'll, add you, I'll show you how to add OIDC authentication to a new Angular app in just a few steps. So I'm gonna put this on the left here, and then we'll open up a terminal on the right. And you can see the first step is to create an Angular app with routing enabled. So you can do that with MPX, Angular CLI, we'll do version 13 and new, we'll call us zero demo, and we'll enable routing. And of course you could install the Angular CLI using npm install dash G, at sign angular slash CLI, and then just use ng, but this is kind of cool where MPX will allow you to actually do everything without installing the CLI globally. So as far as the style sheet format you'd like to use, the default is just fine CSS, but you can use another one too. We're just not gonna do much CSS in this one. Once it's created your app, you can see it took about a minute there. You can CD into it. And I wrote what's called Okta Dev Schematics. And these schematics basically allow you to install Okta for authentication in any of the various front end frameworks, React, Angular, Vue. And I also added support for Auth0 if you're using Angular. So that's what I'm gonna use for this demo. But first, you'll need to actually create an application on Auth0. So you can use the Auth0 CLI for that. If you go to Auth0 slash Auth0 CLI, as far as on GitHub, it'll show you how to install it and you know if you wanna learn more about it. So I already have it installed and I can run Auth0 login to log into my Auth0 tenant. So it says to press enter to open a browser to log in. It'll do some confirmation and then it'll prompt me for how do I want to log in. So however you created your Auth0 account, use that same way to log into it. So if you use social login, use that. If you used email password, use that. So I'm going to continue with, uh, let's do GitHub here. Oh, and then it wants my GitHub username and password. So I got those in uh, one password here. And then it prompts me for my six digit code, which I also have in one password. So it's redirecting me back and it prompts me for which org I wanna use. So I have a jhipster one, I'll go ahead and just use that. It says, congratulations, we're all set. Yes, that's the tenant I wanna use and I can close this window now. And then back to our instructions. So I'll do auth zero apps create and I'll just name it Angular OIDC. Description, you can leave blank. I'm gonna do a single page web application and the callback URLs is going to be, first of all, localhost 4200 home. And the rest of them are going to be localhost 4200. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this right here. Allowed origins and allowed web origins. And then it goes ahead and creates everything for me. The two things that you're going to want to take note of is the issuer or domain name and the client ID. So now we can use Octodev schematics to add OAuth 2.0 and OIDC support to our Angular app. And so you can do that with, oh, can't type clear today, ng add Octodev schematics and pass in the auth0 flag and they'll prompt you for those values as soon as it installs the uh, Octodev schematics. So press yes to proceed. And then it asks what's your OIDC apps issuer URL. Well, that's what we had earlier, but oh, we close that window. Maybe we can scroll it for it. There we go. So this can be two things. If you just put in the domain name like that, that'll work. You can also put in the actual issuer, which is HTTPS and a, a trailing slash. And that will work as well. The Octodev schematics is smart enough to actually trim those off and just use your domain name. And then we had our client ID right here. And it adds the Auth0 Angular SDK, as well as a number of templates. So now we should be able to see what changed. We have some new files. So if we open this up in my favorite IDE, which is IntelliJ, and that's because I kind of have a Java background. So I know you might be using like VS Code or something like that, but I really like the GitHub features or the Git features in IntelliJ. So 
I'll just show you what everything looks like here as far as what it changed. So if we go to the commit window, we can see there's a test that changed, right? So this is, a, this is all that's needed to mock out the auth0 issuer. And then the app module has auth routing module. And that auth routing module is what has all the logic in it. So it's got uh, the configuration for auth0. It's got the routes for that home by default. And then it initializes the auth module from auth0 and provides an auth HTTP interceptor. Also creates this home component, which the most interesting part is just this auth service and the document. So it does, when you click login, it logins with redirect. And when it log out, it returns to your same location. And if you want to use Auth0 console instead of the CLI, you can do that as well. You just log into your Auth0 account, create an account if you don't have one, go to applications, create application, select that single web page application, and use those same redirect URIs. And so at this point, we can run ng-serve to start up our app. And once it's started, we can go to localhost 4200, make that a bit bigger. And you'll see down here in the left corner is a login button. So click that, redirects us to Auth0. The hardest part is remembering your credentials. So I have mine in one password here. And you'll notice it's actually logged me in, right? It's got a logout button. So if I click logout and then log in again, it prompts me again. So let's uh, put those credentials in there again. Oh, I still have them on my clipboard. And then the next thing I wanted to show you is how to actually display the authenticated user's name. So you can use the user observable from the auth service from Auth0's SDK and basically modify your home component to display a welcome message to the user. So let's go in here and back here and into this home component.html. You'll see right now it just has, you know, login and logout buttons. So we're going to replace that with still login and logout buttons, but if the user is authenticated, right, that's what this if statement is, then it goes ahead and displays their name. So it doesn't look like I erased everything. There we go. And then we can uh, go back to our browser and it should already be rendered there. And there you are. Welcome, Matt Rabel. And uh, go ahead and log out if you want. So there you have it. Pretty slick, huh? So you can find the code for this example on GitHub. Like I said, octadev auth0-angular-example. And I also wanted to let you know that I did write an Angular mini book recently. And this book is for someone that's new to Angular or that's new to web development in general. And you'll basically learn how to develop a bare bones application, test it and deploy it. And you'll move on to adding Bootstrap, Angular Material, uh, continuous integration and authentication. And it shows you how to do it both with Auth0 and Okta. And then it builds up a Spring Boot backend and shows you how to communicate with that and the best practices for security there. So it's a free book from InfoQ, so you can download the uh, PDF or the EPUB, and it'll eventually be available as a print version as well. And the initial edition just released about a month ago uses Angular 12 and Spring Boot 2.5. I do plan on updating it probably in the next month or two. If you like this tutorial, I encourage you to follow me on Twitter. I'm at mrabel and you can follow Auth0 as well at Auth0. And of course, you can follow my OctaDev team and subscribe to our YouTube channel at OctaDev on YouTube. Thanks for watching and have a terrific day.